Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! First story I need a free ride. I, 20 male, work on dispatch. It's a little bit different where I live, we have one emergency number nationwide. They contact firefighters after to help. Kinda like a paramedic status without the drugs. So this one guy calls. Let's call him John. John is known for causing havoc in uh, calm lines. Rude, loud and most of the time he's very drunk. Having a crap show day, multiple units on calls under staffing at the time, this guy comes out demanding a transportation. He also do non-emergency transports, physiotherapy, things like that. He screams at me, calls me a jerk after I tried explaining that caps are cheaper. He calls us because no one is willing to take this guy anywhere for free. And he won't pay for the transport like usual. I told him that we are not a taxi service. And if he wants transportation, he needs to schedule like everyone else. He tells me, I will call 911, your boss says, which they are not, and say that's an emergency. Well, you can do that, sir. You are a free citizen. He hangs up and I get a call from the emergency hotline requesting an emergency service to this location. I tell the 911 dispatcher that this guy is a dangerous individual and my brothers at arms will need help. My brothers get to the location and ask me via radio, why is there police? And not any police, the intervention team. And why are they arresting John since the call was for alcohol poisoning? Apparently John wanted an Uber ride from the cops, even trying to enter the driver's seat. They arrested him for refusing to collaborate and for punching a cop. He ended up being hospitalized with a few broken bones and for alcohol addiction. Good luck John, we love you. Next story. I repeatedly tried telling the big box hardware store that the lawn mower waiting for pickup was not my lawn mower, but they wouldn't take no for an answer. I think this falls into this category, but it all started with me purchasing a lawn mower at a big box hardware store. In the interest of keeping them anonymous, let's just call them Rob Lowe or Lowe's for short. I walked in one day looking to finally purchase a new mower, and I was in luck as they had a smoking deal on a display model. I'm prepared to be going home with a new mower that day. I did not bring my truck, so I simply asked if I could set it aside and come back in a little bit with my truck. I returned maybe 30 minutes later and picked up my mower and headed home. This should be the end of the story, but weirdly, it isn't. Fast forward about two weeks later and I get a call from Lowe's informing me that my mower is ready for pickup. Confused, I replied, pardon me? So they reminded me that I ordered the mower about two weeks ago and it just arrived and is awaiting pickup. Now I know most would have seized the opportunity right there, but I decided to be a good person and I explained to the employee that no, I did not order a mower. I bought a floor model and set it aside to pick up later, which I did. The employee thanks me, apologizes for the confusion and says he'll update the order. Well, one week later they call me again, same thing, and I once again explain why it's not mine. They did this once a week for three weeks straight, and after the third time I told the wife I swear if they called me again, I'm going to pick up my mower. At this point, now I'm just excited. I'm watching my phone hoping they will call, because in my mind, I've earned it at this point and I want my free mower. Well, lo and behold, week 4 hits and guess who calls. I'm now ready to accept my free mower, but... I'm also unsure how this is going to play out. I do not know if it's paid for, I don't have a receipt, it seems like a long shot. So I simply tell the employee I'm so sorry I haven't been in yet to get it, but I got called out of town for work and just got back. And with that said, I have no idea where I put the receipt. 
The employee kindly replies, oh, no worries. It's paid in full. All you need is a photo ID matching the name on the order. Perfect. I call the wife to let her know I'm picking up our new mower, and she just laughs. Still positive that once I get there, they won't have a mower to give me. But you'll be happy to know I pull in. Tell the customer service I'm here for my mower, show them my ID, and the next thing you know, some guy on a tow motor is loading a brand new, in the box, unassembled mower into the back of my truck, and off I go. Still have that mower today. I thought about returning the original afterwards, but I just got nervous it would somehow raise the alarms. Then I was going to sell it on the marketplace. But shortly after all this, I had bought a new house and my best friend put in a lot of hours helping me move and he too had been looking for a new mower. So I just gave it to him instead as thanks for helping me. I still ended up with a brand new mower for essentially 60% off and then was also able to pay for movers with the original one so it was still a win-win. I genuinely tried telling them it wasn't my mower, but they insisted it was, and it would be rude to refuse their offer. Next story. Entitled Karen at Hospital Gets Arrested. Whoa, I can't believe I finally have a story to share on this sub. I was in the ER today with an infected cat bite. After about an hour in the waiting room, I finally got a room and started an antibiotic IV drip. After that's finished, I called my doctor back using the call button like he told me to. It takes another 15 minutes or so and he busts into the room and basically says, we have an ambulance in 10 minutes, we need this room so you have to move. Obviously, he was more professional than that, but I summed it up. He unhooks a line needle still in my arm and walks me to a room that already had two people in it and gets me a chair. He tells me to wait a bit and someone will come take it out. Annoying, but understandable. The ER is full, past capacity as far as I can tell. I am sitting there and this lady in the room starts hemming and howling about how this is ridiculous and how long she has been waiting. The nurse literally was just in a room tending to her. She keeps us up for a good 5 minutes before she hits the call button. Repeatedly. The lady comes over the intercom and asks what's wrong. And I kid you not. Her reply was, This is horrible customer service. I have been waiting over an hour and no one has even seen me yet. The lady over the intercom just said to wait a few more minutes and someone will be in to see you. This lady in for god knows what gets up and takes off all the wires and rips the IV out of her arm and storms out of the room. I can't believe what just happened and I'm having trouble picking my jaw up off the floor. I hear a ma'am. What are you doing? And some indiscernible screaming. Just then my doctor came in and got the IV needle out of my arm finished up with all the paperwork and whatnot, and sent me on my way. On my way out, I saw her being loaded into a police car, and she was still screaming her head off. Next story. Getting a protected species off the list. If you've ever worked in a cafe, you'll know who the protected species are. They are usually blonde, female, and hot. They get the cruisy jobs like Paris Tower Waitress. They get paid to bat their eyelashes and look pretty and not much else. For some reason, they never have to help the other staff clean or pack down the establishment at the end of a shift. They never, and I mean never, have to clean the toilets. In fact, you never really see them do anything except text on their phone and be rude to customers. Usually, the boss wants to flirt with them so they get away with not working. I got so sick of the protected species at one of my jobs because she'd leave earlier than me every day and leave all the cleaning and backing down for me to do even though we were meant to share the job equally. I mentioned it to the boss and he pretended to take it on board and nothing was ever said or done about it. She continued to show up, not work, collect money, then hit the beach. If only we all could be sucked up too by financially stable new hippie parents and surf through life on a sea of coconut oil 
and kill smoothies. The final straw came when she made me empty her coffee bin after standing there texting on her phone and watching me clean the entire cafe by myself. We had four seating areas in an outdoor courtyard that needed attending to. That's a lot of furniture, umbrellas, heavy signs, and flower pots to carry and store inside, as well as mopping, vacuuming, cleaning down all the furniture, and packing down and cleaning the front of house equipment. One day I got to work a few minutes before her, and I punched holes in the bottom of a fresh pin bag and set up her coffee bin for the day. Usually I work very clean and efficiently. I put everything away after using it, refill items that are running low, and wipe down my workspaces. This day I did the kinds of things she would do. I left everything out in Missy. I lit everything, including the floor, get sticky, when I made the fresh squeezed juices. I deliberately left spilled milk around the milkshake mixers. I did not refill the cakes in the display fridge. I made sure I got coffee grind under my shoes and tracked it all over the sticky tiles. I didn't cut off fruit to refill the tops. I did not refill anything. Then 45 minutes before the coffee was due to close, I quietly slipped into the little office out the back and told my boss I was having lady problems and needed to leave early. I rarely took sick days in. I always came in early and worked back late. He didn't question it and told me to go home and take care of myself. I slipped out the back without saying goodbye. When I got to work the next day, I found out she had pulled a bag out of the coffee bin and all the filthy grind and watery plaque slob went all over her shoes and the tiles she had just mopped. She had to stay back and clean it up and mop the floor a second time. She had to clean and pack down the entire cafe by herself and it was 10 times filthier than it usually was because I hadn't been given a heck all day. It took her almost 2 hours to do it all and by the end she was covered in filth, sweating and cursing about it. Little Precious couldn't handle putting in any elbow grease and she was bad at her job. This became obvious to my boss finally. He was not impressed that it took her so long to pack down. She tried to complain about me leaving early and leaving it all for her and he pointed out that she often does the same thing to me, only it doesn't take me anywhere near as long to do my job. Anytime she worked with me after that, the boss made sure she did have the work. She hated it and she hated me. It was obvious. I tried not to look too smug about it and she did not last there too much longer. Next story, why I don't run home anymore. So this one Saturday I went to my best friend's place. I stayed there for a few hours, everything seemed fine, and eventually I needed to go back home so I leave, and I start running just to get there faster. We live 30 minutes away from each other by the way, so I decided to take a break after a few minutes in front of a Trader Joe's. I then start running again, but as soon as I start, I get a light feeling of something hard on my elbow. I think nothing of it. After about another block, I took a break and I saw some woman run up to me. Let us call her Karen, I guess. And was saying that I hit her water bottle as she was drinking it. In turn, hitting her too. I apologized, of course, thinking that would be the end of it. But Karen then says, You need to fix this since apparently she recently had something done with her teeth. I didn't know what to do so I apologized again. And of course, that did not make her stop. So Karen started asking me how old I was. I was 15 at the time and then asked if I had an ID or a phone with me because she wanted to talk with my parents. I didn't have either of those things at the moment and there was no way I was going to give her my phone number. I did not have either of those things at the moment and there was no way I was going to give her my phone number. So Karen asked me to come with her to the Trader Joe's because she had left her phone there. I was just thinking to myself, what the hell? But I went anyway because I knew if I tried to run, she would go after me. When we got there a minute later, she started complaining to the employees of the store that because it happened in front of the store, it was now their problem as well as that she needed medical attention from a bum on the tooth. 
After about 10 minutes of her asking to see the manager, and then telling her that they couldn't do anything since it didn't happen on their property, thankfully there was this one really nice cashier who felt bad for me and reminded me that she had no right to make me go with her. With that, I strolled right out of the store. Karen found out I left and started running after me so I said, you have no right to make me go with you. It's considered kidnapping. And of course, she responded by saying, you need to fix my tooth. But from what I could tell, there was nothing wrong with it. I kept walking and turned around to see that she was taking pictures of me for some reason. I asked her to stop but replied with, no, not until you fix my tooth. Once again, right after that I see my saviors. Two cops walking down the street. I say excuse me officers, they come over and ask me what's wrong. I explain the situation, and by that time two more cops have arrived and are asking for Karen's side of the story. Once they hear our sides of the story, Karen said that she wants to sue me. I kid you not, it gets better though. She then said that I assaulted her, but wait, there is more. One of the cops asked her to look up the definition of assault. I swear I almost burst out laughing. So she read it out loud and it said, Assault, at common law, an intentional act by one person that creates an apprehension in another of an imminent, harmful, or offensive contact. An assault is carried out by a threat of bodily harm coupled with an apparent, present ability to cause the harm. Then one of the cops pointed out the word intentionally asked me if I intentionally bumped into her, and I obviously said no. Karen stopped talking for a few seconds, finally said, He hurt my tooth, it needs to be fixed. And the officers offered to call an ambulance, and she said no. She got so mad that they wouldn't arrest me, and she walked off angrily. And just like that, I never saw her again. Anyway, those police officers were some of the nicest, and most calm people I have ever met, and they agreed with me on how crazy and entitled she was. As for me, I never ran in front of that Trader Joe's again. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.